our lips. Come on here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, clap those hands if you're excited to be in the house of the Lord on today. Hallelujah. Amen. We thank the Lord for our worship leader on today, Sister Nina. Uh, let's thank the Lord for her. She did such a wonderful job. <laughs> wonderful job. And she came at the last minute and she led us in a very marvelous way this morning in worship. And she brought her family and her friends with us. Let's thank the Lord for them on today. Amen. We thank God for you. We thank God for you. Amen. Amen. And if, in fact, this is your first time here, would you just go ahead and wave your hand so we can acknowledge you? Uh, amen. All of you that are here for the first time, blessings to you. It is a pleasure that you have decided to worship with us today. I'm going to ask some of our uh, regular members if you would just greet them for us real quick. Take a second. Let's greet um, our, 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 our friends on today. Come on, guys. Uh, you might have to get out of your seat. Let's greet those that are here for the first time. Come on, go greet them. Uh, yeah, go greet them. Come on, this is church. This is church. This is fellowship. This is church. This is fellowship. Uh, go greet. Go greet those that are here for the first time. Amen. Blessings to you. Blessings to you. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you're online, let's welcome those who are online for the very first time on today. Welcome those who are online for the very first time today. Amen, amen, and amen. Hallelujah. And it is good to be in the house of the Lord on today. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I want to acknowledge a very long time friend. Sister Sharice is here today. Amen. Blessings to you. Praise the Lord for being here on today. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, it is first Sunday on today, and we always like to come to the Lord's table on first Sunday before we get into the word. Amen. And so um, you should have received your communion cups. If not, we are passing them out to you if you have not received uh, the Lord's uh, communion on today. Amen. And how many of you are thankful that um, Jesus died for your sins? I'm going to say that again. How many are thankful that Jesus died for your sins? Hallelujah, somebody. Amen. And whenever we come to the Lord's table, it is a time of reflection, a time of remembrance. And we are thanking God for all of his many sacrifices that he already made. Do you know that he climbed Golgotha's hill and he was beaten, wounded, and scourged knowing that we would mess up? He knew we would mess up. But tell somebody, he went anyway. He went anyway. Who wouldn't serve a God that would sacrifice so much for us? Hallelujah. So God so loved the world that he gave. That he gave. I think one of the greatest acts of Christianity is being able to give. Do you hear what I'm saying to you? Amen. I'm in 1 Corinthians 11. And it says, For I receive from the Lord what I also pass on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it. And said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us eat. And in the same way, after supper, he took the cup saying, this cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance 
of me. Let us drink. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Hallelujah. And we're thanking the Lord that if there was any infirmity um, that was in your body before you took this, we declare that there's healing now taking place in your body. Amen. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah. How many are thankful to be here? Shout amen. amen. Come on, shout amen. amen. Hallelujah. Shout amen. 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 Well, we thank the Lord that he has kept us. You ready to shout? Financially. I feel like we shouted good there. I said he's kept us financially. As I look around, I believe that nobody slept outdoors last night. A amen. Amen. That God is a consistent provider. Do you hear what I'm saying to you? That he always meets all of our needs, supplies all of our needs. And we thank the Lord that even as we open up with the Lord's tithe and offering, that the Lord has been tremendously good to us. Amen. Somebody say he's been tremendously good to me. And that ain't even a big enough word. Tremendously good to me. Hallelujah. Amen. So by, he says, bring ye all the tithe into the storehouse and I will pour you out a blessing you wouldn't have room enough to receive. Do you hear me? He says that I only want 10%. Do you hear me? Of everything that you bring in. And do you know God is so fair that he said, I'll let you live off the other 90. That's that's more than somebody said that's more than fair. He says, just bring me 10. Now, God does not need your money. Not if he created the sun, the moon, the stars and showed down its place. Hear me. He's testing you with your money. Do you hear me? So he says, let's do some simple math. If you make $1,000 in a week, how much do you owe God? 2000 3000 Come on, want 4,000, 5,000. Basic, basic math. You already know this, that God is more than fair. Some of you are believing God, hear me. Some of you are believing God that this will be a season that you come completely out of debt. There should be a little more amens right there. Some of you believe in God that you're going to be able to vacation without worrying about bills. Yeah. So, Pastor, what is the solution? Tithe. When you tithe and give to God, he protects everything that concerns you financially. How many of you know that stuff does, stuff will jump off during the week, you know? Yes. The alternator will go out. Y'all yeah. ain't saying nothing to me. Yeah. Hot water heater will, y'all. Yeah. Come on here, somebody. But even when those things happen, the Lord says, because you're tired, that you'll have the resources to get it fixed. More than enough. Do y'all believe this is going to be a season of compensation? Yeah. Listen to me in the spirit. There are some people that owe you right now. And the Lord says they even have to come back and give you what's yours. And the Lord says not only are they going to give you what's yours, but I'm going to give you more because you waited longer than most people. Y'all ain't. Somebody say tither, 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 tither. When you sow into the house of the Lord, 
we store up that if there be any need, any needs within this church, any needs in the community, that we are, we are able to provide for those. I said last week that we are believing God that there's anybody that has a need of this church, that God's going to raise people in this church that are going to help fulfill those needs. Amen. Do y'all hear what I'm saying to you? Amen. That we will be sufficient enough to be able to help people, help those who are in need. Do you hear me? If you're giving now, you can sow now. There are two methods you can sow by. Dollar sign, generation of hope. That's our first method. Dollar sign, generation of hope. Or you can text the word give that is on our screens. That's on our screens. Dollar sign, generation of hope. Dollar sign, generation of hope. Or you can text the word give that is on our screen. Hallelujah, somebody. Amen. Dollar sign, generation of hope, or text the word give that is on the screen on today. Amen? Amen. For some of you, you're going to be the first in your family to break financial curses off of your family. Do you know that God's going to use you to do something that's never been done in your bloodline? That, that you're going to be able to put people through college. Y'all ain't saying it to me. You're going to be able to buy your own land and build your own buildings. Y'all don't believe me. He said you shall be a lender. Y'all know the rest of the scripture, don't you? Somebody say, we will get there. Amen. All right, let's get into the word on today. Um, let's go ahead and turn uh, to 2 Samuel. 2 Samuel chapter 9. 2 Samuel chapter 9. And I'm just going to be reading verses 3 through 7. 2 Samuel 9 verses 3 through 7. And before we start today, I want to just let you know that there are going to be some major transitions that take place in your life this season. And you have to start preparing for these transitions. Do you hear me? For many of you, you're in a place of comfortability. And God is going to subtly transition you. Do you hear me? Into some different areas. Because where, where some of you may be right now, the Lord is saying it's too small for you. That your anointing and the gift of grace that's on your life right now needs room to flourish. Needs room to flourish. And so the Lord is saying, I'm getting ready to place you in an area of your life where you can fully move into and grow into everything I placed in you. Which means that you can no longer be around people who want you to remain stuck. 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 There's somebody that's been feeling their spirit. I, you know, I'm, 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 I'm bigger than this. I'm bigger than this. I got to grow now. There's, there's more for me. I, I feel a shout. There's more for me. We wake it up. There's more for me. And I'm going to live to see it. This is why you ought not give up where you are. Because you don't know what's going to happen for you positively. Very soon. All right, let's get into the text today. 2 Samuel 9 verses 3 through 7. It says, I'm starting somewhat in the middle of the text, which is... Not normally what we do, but it's going to make some sense as we start at the middle, then we'll get uh, to the end. You ready? It says, the king asks, is there 
no one still alive from the house of Saul to whom I can show God's kindness to. And Ziba answered the king, there is still a son of Jonathan and he's lame in both feet. David says, where is he? he the king asks, Ziba answered, he's at the house of Machir in Lodabar. And so King David had him brought from Lodabar from the house of Machir to son of Emil. And when, verse 6, when Mephibosheth, son of Jonathan, son of Saul, came to David, he bowed down to pay him honor. And David said, Mephibosheth, at your service, he replied, David said, don't be afraid. David said to him, for I will surely show you kindness for the sake of your father, Jonathan. You ready? And I will restore to you all the land that belonged to your grandfather, Saul. And you will always eat at my table. You know, the Bible will preach all by itself. You don't got to add nothing to it. Just, just read it. All right, I need you to help me energize the atmosphere and look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, prepare for a shift. Woo, I felt that. Look, look at somebody else because that neighbor didn't really get it. Look at the other one and say, prepare for a shift. I don't know about you, but there's about to be some shifts that are going to hit your life. Hallelujah. Somebody shout, I'm ready for, ready for the word. You may be seated. If you stand up again, that's on you. Amen. So there's a giant, and most of you might have seen it, there's a giant slide at a state park in Detroit. And this giant slide has just reopened after a bumpy ride since some park goers flying a few weeks ago and videos have been going viral from this big slide. And officials at Bell Park announced on Facebook about a few weeks ago that they were closing their famous giant slide. Hear me, to make some adjustments to the speed. Make some adjustments to the speed. And after some visitors went airborne on their way down the steep they figured that we need to make everyone say adjustments. adjustments. Come on, wake up, say adjustments. adjustments. The slide had to reopen last week and after a two year closure due to the pandemic, the Michigan official department of natural resources closed it because of the bumpiness and because of the complaints of the slide. With the slide giving off a whiff of vibes, uh, the New Jersey Notorious Action Park officials announced uh, on August 21st that they scrubbed down the surface. You ready? Sprayed water on the slide between the rides to reduce the speed. Here we go. A park employee from this park demonstrated on Facebook, on a Facebook video, how to uh, properly ride the six lane slide. Okay. Some of y'all might have seen it. Yeah, yeah. And what happens is you put on this burlap sack provided to each rider. He demonstrated how to get into the sack. He also emphasized that riders most mistakes that riders make is that when Mother Carmen, they are going down the slide, they lean back. Come on here, somebody. Park rider said 
that's the wrong method. It's, it's not even, the slide ain't even really the issue. Oh, come on here, somebody. He said it's their position. It's their, somebody say position. He says instead of them leaning back, you ready? Lean forward. If they lean forward, you ready? He says it helps to alleviate bumpiness. Oh, I can't get no help here. In other words, with, with one shift, one shift, you have the ability to make the whole ride smoother. I need everyone in here to lift up their hands so you can receive this for some of you who might be sleep. Wake up. You ready? Here it is. The Lord said today, for those of you who would shout, the only way to alleviate the bumpiness you have been going through is to shift forward. Come on. Look at somebody and say, I got a shift. I, I got y'all didn't do it. Look at somebody in the back and say, I, I, it's time for me to shift. I'm sorry, but I got to go. I have to shift. Can we get into the word? Here it is. Second Samuel 9 opens up with David coming into prominence into his kingship and into the palace. And he looks around. You ready? And he asks this reverberating question when he got to the palace and into prominence. He says, you ready? He says, um, um, servants look good. Palace looks nice. He's going up and down the stairs to canvas the palace and to look at what might need to be changed and all uh, Brother Daniel is in order. And then he stops right there in the foyer and says, I'm looking at all of these servants that are here, but is there anybody else in this household of salt? that I can show kindness to. Uh, come on here, somebody. Ziba, who's still there uh, because he was employed by his old boss, Saul. He says, David, I, I don't know if you heard this, but Saul, um, he does still have a grandson and his name is Mephibosheth. And we don't talk about him a lot uh, because the, the boy is lame in both feet. Be careful of people uh, that like to bring up your issues and not your failures. Y'all ain't said it to me here this morning. Uh, be careful of folk who are quick, you ready, to throw you under the bus. I thought Zibble was there to bring his name up to help him, but when people mention your issues, they oftentimes mention your issues to try to disqualify you. But what they don't understand is that the more you mention my issues, come on, here, somebody, the more God qualifies me. Because God, I feel like shouting early, because God does math differently than we do. Come on, here, somebody. He brought up his issue. Huh? said uh, 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 he's lame he didn't even have to say that but he said he was lame in both feet you ready you ready here it is this child mother Carmen name of Fibosheth, uh, uh scripture says that when he was young Cherise that they were they were they were trying to run from the war and the nurse that kept him while his daddy was at war dropped oh I ain't even gonna get into that she dropped him come on and and he now Alexis became lame in both feet was it his fault he didn't ask for it come on here somebody now I never been dropped and became lame but I do know what it's like to be dropped y'all ain't come on here somebody dropped by a label dropped in a relationship dropped from a position y'all act like you ain't ever been dropped from some stuff Dro hey, you, you wasn't even expecting it but dropped he was dropped he's dropped and now he's lame in both feet 
and and the Lord told me to tell you number one you ready you ready to shout he said he said your issues will not stop your shift all right let me talk to this side over here your issues will not stop your shift. I, I don't know uh, who needs to hear this, but there's somebody in here today that thinks that because you have this issue, now, I don't know what your issue is, but all of our issues are different, but, but, but you, you, you've, been, you've been giving a lot of attention to your issue. And you've been saying, Lord, well, maybe I'm not qualified to do it. Maybe I can't do it. Maybe because I have this issue that nobody knows about. Maybe because, you know, I was born into issues. I ain't get no amens there. Maybe because I've been learning how to operate and function and smile with the issue that I'm not going to be able to move forward. But I want to alleviate some of y'all from the damage that other people cause over your life this to Sunday morning and let you know that your issue yes yours 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 yes your issue will not stop your shift now there are some of you who are not saying amen because you're trying to be analytical and add up and try to figure out what well, that doesn't go with that and this doesn't go with this baby I just told you that the Lord said your issue won't stop your shift and the reason your issue will not stop your shift is because God knew your issue before you knew your I'm a I feel like preaching in a minute. He knew your issue. I feel like preaching. If y'all push me, I will. Before you even knew your issue. And I want you to understand that even you might go through depression or have relationship issues or money issues or issues with your health. Baby, all of that ain't enough to stop. Come on here. This next shit. So elbow your neighbor real quick early on and say shit. That's not enough to stop you from moving. You think a little breakup can stop you from moving forward? You think losing a few dimes can stop you from... You think, come on here, them talking about you negatively and disparagingly can stop you from shifting, baby? You don't understand who I am. I was born with a chip on my shoulder. And I, come on here, somebody. I need somebody to attack me just so that I can shift. Come on here, somebody. Somebody ought to leap up and sit down and say, Say shift. All right. All right. All right. So my issue, my issue can't stop me. I feel like we got an old church. My issue can't stop me. My issue can't stop me. And this is why you can't allow people that are around you make you think that your issue is going to be the problem when you get there. Baby, God already, come on here, Brother Joseph, calculated my issue into my purpose. And he called me with my issue. Y'all ain't going to talk to the preacher here today. Well, let me give you some word. Moses had an issue. He stuttered. Y'all need another person. Joseph had an issue. He was rejected. Y'all need, need somebody else, don't you? Come on here, somebody. Mephibosheth is the one we talk about. He got an issue. And it don't, it don't matter what your issue is. God loves to use people that got issues. That's why you ought to stop waiting until you get off everything together to start acting. Come on here, somebody. You ought to stop waiting until all of your T's are crossed and all of your I's are dotted before you come back to church, baby. You better come with all of your messed up self, with all of your lies, with all of your old scandalous ways, with all of your issues, and press your way into the house of the Lord because this is a hospital. What I look like, come on here, try to fix myself I need to go see Dr. Jesus oh. Somebody say, I, I, I got an issue, but I'm okay. I, I got an issue, but I'm going to make it. I, I got an issue, but I'm anointed. I got an issue, but God's hand is on me. Y'all ain't saying it to the preacher. I, 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 I got an issue, but the church is good. I, I got an issue, but come on. I got an issue, but that ain't going to stop my shift. All right. All right. All right. All right. Somebody say go deeper. Go deeper. All right. David says, I know he got an issue, but he bypassed the fact that Ziba said he had an issue. That's how mature David was. You know, there are some folk that would listen to the issue they spoke over you and then disqualify you because they spoke negative about you. But, but David says, no, nah, I'm, I'm going to ignore what you're trying to do to him. Right. 
because there's a whole lot of people that like to talk about you when they're in a better place than you and see David knew that the only reason you speaking negative about him is because you're in the palace and he's still in a pitch season and come on here somebody and woe on to all of them people that spoke negative about you when you was in your pit and they was in their palace if they don't, haven't heard they heard this morning that God has just now shifted the line and those who are in the back are moving directly to the oh I gotta stop I gotta stop I gotta stop because there's somebody that came in here today and said pastor I don't know who's gonna be at church I don't care if it's raining outside. I'm going to press my way there because I'm, I, come on, I'm hungry for a word from the Lord. And this is what God is about to do with this church. It's filling up with people that are hungry for the word. Come on here, somebody. Come on, you can't be in this service and be sedity and be uppity and be conservative when you need something from the Lord. You just got to go for yours because only you know the issue you face when you get home. Somebody let that thing out and said, I got to go for mine. He said, he said now, he said the boy, the boy is in Lodabar. So doing some careful exegetical study, we found out that Lodabar is considered the projects. There was, this was not a boomy economical system. There were no thriving school systems. There was no health care management. There was nothing good about Lodabar. It was considered, you ready? The lowest of the lowest. Now, here's what I'm trying to figure out. I'm trying to figure out why is he in Lodabar and he's born into royalty. Oh, Y'all missed him. Because the Lord told me here, he said, there are some people that will place you how they see you. You're not, y'all didn't get that one. Let me talk to this side in the back. because He said, you got to be careful because there are some people that will place you in a low position because they see you being low. And so they throw you to the wolves, they throw you to the back because that's how you see you. But I hear the Lord saying, I'm about to send some people in your life that see you for the greatness that's, with, that's within you. And see, this is why some of y'all can't get out of the hole and, and, and the issues that you're in. It's because you're around people that see you beneath them. You know, one thing the pandemic did is it revealed to us how people saw, oh y'all ain't gonna talk to me here, it, it revealed to us how people saw us brother Greg come on here never in my life have I experienced the way people saw me but through the pandemic because in the pandemic this is when all the creatives had to stand up and had to rise to show that I'm going to make it through it but then there was another group of people that you were connected to that did not want you to grow come on here somebody and they always saw you beneath them pastor how you know you got friends like that well if you're always on the fall with them type of people and it's all about them and you trying to play double dutch to get in so you can say something come on here somebody the lord says i had to remove people out of your life come on here somebody and it was all about them they never wanted you to know that you was anointed they never wanted you to know that there was greatness in you they never wanted you to know i feel like preaching here they never wanted you to know that there was something great on the inside of you but the lord says one thing that's going to help your elevation this season is that I'm about to, for those of you who will shout, the Lord says, I'm about to send you some people that can see where you're going and not and come on here and be a, come on here somebody, and really be a covering and not a smothering. See, some of y'all have some people around, some of y'all date some people and they can't even see your potential. The devil is a liar. Some of y'all work with some people and they can't see your potential. Baby, do you know God is about to send you a new group of people that can see every single thing that you got to offer. Come on here, somebody. The reason why some of y'all are going through mild uh, moods of depression, it ain't even you. Let me help you. It's the people that are around you that are causing you to feel less than who you are. Now, you already deal with insecurities, but you don't need no people around you that are going to speak and, and come on here and encourage you to be more insecure. The devil is a liar. Tell somebody, I got to start encouraging myself. 
All right. Lodabar. Nobody wanted to drive through Lodabar. It was depressing. And I don't know if it rained every day in Lodabar, but it sure felt like it was rainy days. Which brings me to point two. You ready? Here it is. Some people love to throw shame on shifters. Some people love to throw shame on shifters. Here it is. In order for them to hide Mephibosheth, um, they took him to a place of shame. Took him to a place of shame and he's lame in both feet. He can't walk. You ready? And since Mephibosheth can't walk, you ready? They're embarrassed by him. Embarrassed by him. Embarrassed by him. Furthermore, Mother Carmen, they put him in a shameful place to try to match his issue. Funny how people can put you in stuff they won't put their self in. <laughs> so they'll put you in a relationship, but they wouldn't date the person they're trying to put you. Then they'll put you on a job and say, you can work there, you can do it, but they would never do it. Ooh, I feel the Holy Ghost right here. Bible says, they put them in a place of shame. However, I thought this, I thought they did this on the conditional basis that they were embarrassed of him, hear me, but they knew the boy was a shifter. <laughs> I want you to stop thinking that people don't see you. I want you to stop thinking that nobody is noticing your anointing. I want you to stop saying to yourself that nobody recognizes what I do and that I'm not having it in. Stop thinking like that because most of the people that see you are people who will never like your post. Never comment on your post. Never congratulations. You got way more followers than you think. You might have 10,000, but you really got 20,000 people that, that aren't commenting and liking and following you because those are people that are secretly jealous of what you're doing. And every time you post something about acceleration and growth, they get mad at you because they're upset. You ready to shout? They're, they're upset, Shanique, because your group has them. Y'all ain't going to say that to the preacher this morning. They're mad because you are now at a level where you don't need them. Come on here, somebody. And by the way, why do I need somebody that's in competition with my anointing? That ain't somebody I need. I need somebody who's willing to walk through this with me and support me and grow with me. Come on here, somebody. And this is why some of y'all are frustrated right now because you're dating people that are in competition with you. And you work with the people that are in competition with you. And the Lord is saying, I'm tired of people the only reason they're trying to compete with you is because they know what you have to offer come on here they know that you are anointed and gifted for this season they know that the hand of the Lord is on your life so they threw him in shame they threw him in shame see the, the, see the only thing they could say about Mephibosheth you ready is that he's lame it's the only thing you can say about me, bro. And the only reason you can say I'm lame is because you know somebody dropped me. They didn't have no new evidence. Oh. They, 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 they don't have no new evidence on them. They just, they, there are some folk, but be careful. There are some people, they ain't got nothing new on you. They got old stuff that's on you. And what you got to understand is that when people can't find mess on you, they make up mess about you. To try to disqualify you from where God's gone, but I want you to leap and sit down. The Lord said, For every person that made up a lie about you, come on here, somebody, they're gonna be at your breakfast table because the Lord says, I'm preparing a table in the midst of your enemies, and you may not want them there, but give them some eggs and bacon anyway because I need my enemies to stay. Hey, y'all ain't saying that to the preacher. I need my enemies to be at my brunch. You know why? Because they need to see me go up. I know you want to come, but no, this is for the haters. They got to see me drink. 
drink my li- they gotta see me drink my orange juice they gotta see me eat my pastry they gotta see me this season excel into where God wants me to be because these are the same individuals that saw me beneath them somebody say I'm going up I'm going up yeah, I'm going up. That shit. Yeah, I'm going up. I can't stay stuck in this place no more. I'm going up. Come on here. They put him in a low place and threw shame on him. You ready? And they threw shame on him to try to cover up how really gifted he was. You ready? If you're facing some major attacks right now, that means that the enemy's trying to throw shame on you. Lift your hand for me. Be delivered from every, every thought of condemnation. Be delivered from, from, from some of what y'all did last night. Be delivered from your old past. Be delivered. Come on here. Be, I feel the Holy Ghost right here. Be, 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 be delivered from what you did that you didn't mean to do. Be delivered from the people you connected with that you didn't mean to. Be delivered from all of your old negative behaviors. And ah, ah, be delivered. I feel a deliverance. Be delivered. Be delivered. Be delivered. Be delivered. Because be delivered. Be delivered. Be delivered. Be delivered. Come on. And after you get delivered, the Lord says, I got grace. After you get delivered, the Lord says, I got more grace. And after you get delivered, he says, I got more grace. And after you get delivered, he says, now I got some mercy for you. Be delivered, be delivered. I will not live in my past. I will not live in condemnation. I will not live in how you help me. I will not live in who I used to be. I am a changed creature. All things have passed away and all things have become new. Yeah, I feel the Holy Ghost. I am the head and not the tail. I'm above and not beneath. I shall be a lender and not a buyer. Be delivered, be delivered, be delivered, be delivered, be delivered. So last Sunday I'm walking out of here feeling guilty. It's going to be the last week I make you feel bad for my anointing. This is going to be the last year that I walk around depressed. Be delivered. We don't talk enough about deliverance because we want people to to feel less than us. So we'll make up rumors about their shame and then we'll run to these these blogs and tell all their business. Because we want people to feel bad for what they did. But this is why I love Jesus. Because whenever Jesus showed up, he never talked about their issue. He healed them and then said, don't do it no more. Y'all ain't going to talk to the preacher in here today. He never said, ah, yes, you're going to suffer for that. You're going to live like this. He delivered them and then said, now be delivered from the thing that you did. Y'all ain't going to talk to the preacher. All right, let me give you some Bible. When the woman with the issue of blood was crawling to Jesus, the Bible says that she reached up and grabbed the hem of his garment. And the Bible says that healing, Elisa, left her body immediate, left his body immediately. He didn't have time to have a thesis with her and ask her, what did you do to bleed all these years? Who did you sleep with? Who did you lie with? Who did you hurt? He just said, girl, because you're pressed into my house, be delivered. And I'll ask questions later. Some people love to throw shame on shifters. If you weren't a shifter, then how do you explain when you walk into certain rooms, everything changes? If you ain't a shifter, then how do you explain when you land in a new city, you can tell the whole atmosphere shifted when you got there? If you ain't a shifter, then how can you tell that when you walk into your job, everything just shifts? If you ain't a shifter, then how do you think that there are certain people that can't hang with you because they can't handle your shift? Somebody say, I'm a shifter. All right, here we go, here we go, here we go. King David, King David had him brought in from Lodabar, sent the motorcade to his house, and suddenly brought him from uh, this low economic area of the projects. You ready? In to the palace. 
Can I give you point three? You ready? God is shifting you. You going to shout? God is shifting you from behind the scene to the front of the scene. Oh, y'all didn't get it. Mother in the back, I know you'll get it. God is shifting you from behind the scene to the front of the scene. All right, all right. I want maybe to understand, here it is, that Mephibosheth has always been behind the scene. He's been hidden. You ready? And suddenly, one day, uh, they come to pick him up. And I want you to understand um, um, uh, that what God does next, you ready to shout? He said it's going to happen immediately. All right, some of y'all got it. He he said it's going to happen immediately. Y'all, y'all can sit there and wait for it if you want to. He, he said it's going to happen immediately. Okay, sit there like I ain't talking to you. He, he said it's going to happen immediately. The stuff you've been waiting for in December, he said, I'm going to give you this month. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. The stuff you've been waiting for in 2023, he said, what if I gave it to you next week? He said, he said immediately. See, what you don't understand is that you serve a God that's not restricted to the confines of time. That God sits above time. And every time he says move, it moves. Y'all ain't gonna say, every time he says shift, there's a shift. And for you right here, the Lord is saying, I'm getting ready to give it to you immediately. Come on here. I don't know what you've been praying for. I don't know what you've been asking God for. But the Lord says, I'm gonna give it to you immediately. Immediately. Look, somebody said it ain't gonna take long now, baby. It, it ain't gonna take long now. Come on here. You better get used to me. Don't get used to me driving this old raggedy car. Uh, don't, it ain't gonna take long now. Come on here. No, don't get used to me. Come on, being on dialysis much longer. It ain't gonna take long now because God's about to do something immediately. Don't you get used to me just being beneath everybody else. It ain't gonna take long now. I'm trying to preach faith to you because some of y'all love the Lord, but you've been waiting back and watching other people and celebrating their success, and that's good. But how about the Lord saying, it's, it's your time now. Yes. Elbow your neighbor say, it's finally my time, baby. Come on here. And this is for those that have been in the background waiting for an opportunity. You've been treated like an underdog, overlooked all your life, and people have misused you. You didn't have a choice of the family you were born into, and you had to deal with issues that you could write a book about. But the Lord said to anoint them today and to let them know it's their time. This is going to be the time where God raises up those that had to suffer after you have suffered for a while. I will strengthen you and establish. Y'all don't know the word. Come on here. After I have, come on here. After you have suffered, he's going to strengthen you and establish you. I'm too, you need to get to the point where you say I'm too anointed to stay sick. I remember about four years ago, Mother Carmen was coming to church and she had uh, she had something on her to monitor her heart and she had to wear it all day and we stood in the sanctuary and she just carried on uh, yeah, and prayed like wasn't nothing wrong because it's hard to stop a prayer warrior. Y'all ain't gonna talk to the preacher in here today. Mother Carmen got to praying in the blood of Jesus and said, I ain't too old. Uh, God still got a purpose and a plan for my life. And I want to speak to somebody that's in here today that ain't said one amen, but you're gonna get this. The Lord says, you ain't too old. It's still your time. And uh, y'all ain't gonna talk to me. Come on here. Do you know that God has impeccable time? timing that when he shows up you thank him that he did not release you too soon or thank the Lord that he didn't release us prematurely I'm so glad that God let me mature I'm so glad that he seasoned me for my season I'm so glad that he prepared me for for the palace I'm so glad that he let me sit until I was ready I'm so glad that he kept me and mowed me because he's a power I'm so glad that he anointed me for the task All right, we're almost done. From behind the scene to the front of the scene. He's watching everybody else get promoted. Y'all never been there. Watching everybody else get raises. Watching everybody else get married. 
watching everybody else buy their house. Huh? Well, watching everybody else start their business and make several thousand dollars. Watching everybody else grow. He's still behind the scene. The difference when you're royal and there's greatness in you, you don't got to push your way to the front. You ready to shout? God will send people to you. And the people he sends to you got the resources. Oh God, I can't to bring you out of what you in. Come on, hear somebody. Look at somebody say, Why you praying about it? God done already worked it out for you. Why you the line, if you ain't heard by now, is getting ready to shift. It's getting ready to shift. And suddenly those who are in the back. I'm moving to the front. Can, can we do something spontaneous? We ain't in gym class, but can we do this? Can you just stand up and turn around for me? Stand up and turn around, just real quick, turn around one time. The Lord says, that's how quick I'm getting ready to do it. You, you ain't. Somebody said, this next turnaround, God's going to do it for me overnight. This next turnaround, God's going to do it for me overnight. This ne- We might lose, break loose. Here. This next turnaround, God's going to do it for me quickly and fast. Somebody turn around one more time and say, just that fast. Uh, just blink your eyes and say, just, just that fast. Nod your head and say, just that fast. Lift up your hand and say, just that fast. Come on, uh, come on here. Wave your hand and say, just that fast. Open your mouth and say, just that fast. It's about to happen so fast. That's gonna blow your mind from the back to the front. You go. Do you know? Just that this this about to be a season. This about to be a season of standing room only for you. You about to walk into standing room only. Somebody said, Pastor, I don't really want that. You about to walk into standing room only because people need to know how it is how, how you look when you stand through adversity how do you look when you stand through the pain this is how you look when you've endured infliction and loss this is how you look and it's getting ready to be standing and, and the people that gotta stand for you don't like you but God's about to command them to stand for the anointed. Y'all ain't going to talk to me here today. And see, you got to know, know you're anointed because all of the fake ones had to go first. I said all the fake ones had to go first. Yeah. I said all the fake ones had to go first. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. I said all the fake ones had to go first. Y'all ain't gonna, I said all the fake ones had to go first. Now the genuine ones are, genuine ones are coming. Can I get, can I get to this point? Yes. All right, all right. I, I may not get to five. I may just get to this fourth one and we're done. But I gotta tell you this. You ready? Since when Mephibosheth, son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, came before David and bowed down, he he paid him honor. Verse seven. And here we go. Don't be afraid, David said to him. For I surely show you kindness for the sake of your father Jonathan. Can I give you four? We may not get to five, but four be good enough. You ready? The Lord says new relationships await your shift. New relationships await your shift. All right. God's moving Mephibosheth into some, some healthy relationships. Because every relationship he's been in up until this point has been destructive. They've been pulling from him. Here it is. And he don't have nothing else to offer. So they're draining him and depleting him of everything he has because they're the wrong relationships. You ready? Now, can I share this with you? Um, I got to share it because it's going to make complete sense. Um, a, a few, about three, four weeks ago, my wife, she got a new car. Well overdue for it. Well overdue for a new car. I took it to get it washed, and I noticed something that I knew I would share in this sermon today. When I took it to get washed, I noticed that there was paper that was still on the doorknob. All right, y'all, y'all missed it. It was so new that there was paper that was still 
on the doorknob. Do y'all hear what I'm saying to you? Now, how does this, how do I make this applicable to you? The, the Lord said, your new, your new relationship still got paper on them. Y'all missed it. The Lord says, you ain't never seen nothing like what's new about to come into your life. It has never been done before. Nobody's ever experienced it. Nobody's ever saw it. Nobody's ever, walked. y'all didn't say it, amen. Nobody's ever walked into it. It's a new, your new season got paper on it, baby. Ain't nobody ever saw that season you about to walk into. And as you walk into your new season, you're going to be pulling off paper. Because God is creating something new that fits just you. You ain't about to get nobody's hand-me-downs. Somebody shot new. Pulling paper off because <laughs> it's so fresh, it's so new. And God said, Mephibosheth, I'm going to give you a new relationship, something that got paper on it, something you've never seen before. What do you mean, Pastor? When he, when he got into the palace, Mephibosheth, you ready? He was born into royalty, Shanique, but he never saw the palace. All of his life, he grew up seeing the pit. So finally, Brother Greg, he moves into a season that shows him nothing but the palace. He went, he went from not having enough to eat, Brother Greg, to having more than enough to eat. Oh, Baba, she could have a whole so called a whole saga. Now, here's our shouting point. David said, help me if I'm wrong. David said to him right there in the kitchen of the palace, he said, there's no need to be afraid for I will surely restore unto you <laughs> everything, mama, you with me? Everything that belonged to your grandfather. Y'all missed it. In other words, David, uh, Mephibosheth, this will be your season of compensation. Y'all missed it. I'm getting ready to give you back stuff that you didn't even know was yours. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. There's some folk that might be walking around with your stuff that you may not even, y'all, okay, let me stop. I ain't even going to go there. The, the Lord says, I'm getting ready to restore to you stuff that you didn't even know that was yours. Now, what's crazy is that he's living in the projects yeah. and he owns the palace and the land. Wow. <laughs> and David has to set himself aside yeah. to say, bro, the only reason I'm here is because of your grandfather Saul. Look at somebody and say, you, you, look at somebody and say, you come from royalty, baby. You come from royalty. You, yeah, you look at somebody and say, you come from royalty. You come from royalty. Come on. Y'all didn't do it. Say, you come from royalty. You come from royalty. Now look at somebody and say, say, God's about to give you back every single thing that you lost. Come on here. Everything. And I ain't just talking about money. The Lord says, I'm getting ready to give you some relationships back. Come on here, somebody. You may not want them, but it's going to be up to your discretion. He's about to give you some money back. Come on here. Y'all ain't going to talk to the preacher here this morning. He says, I'm about to give you every single thing back that the devil stole. Now, here's what's mind-blowing and we're done. He said, Ziba, because you mentioned his I issue, he says, Ziba, you and your sons are to farm the land for him. Woo! I got to go. We got to go. <laughs> you and your sons are to farm the land for him. In other words, somebody shout, your enemies are about to work for you. In other words, I'm putting your enemies on staff. And whatever I tell them to do, they're going, y'all ain't going to talk to me here. He, 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 I want y'all to understand how much he blessed him. He, he said, Mephibosheth, don't you even lift a finger up no more. He says, all you got to do is just nod your head a blink and I'm going to go get it. I'm going to have them go get it for you. Look at somebody say, your enemies are about to bring your next blessing to you. Your, 
Somebody get up. Say, your enemies are about to bring your next blessing for you. Come on here. Your, your enemies are getting ready to bring your next blessing to you, baby. You've been praying that your enemies would die. You've been praying that God would hurt your enemies. You've been praying that they would fall by the roadside. You need them to live because they got work to do for you. See, this is what blows me away because there are some folk that wrote you off and said that you would never have nothing. Come on here. But now you are in a position to hire the same people. Come on here, somebody that spoke negative about you. Can I just brag on God real quick? A few years, about 12 years ago, I worked in another business. Come on here. And, and, and I said I had these aspirations to start a business. And when I left that business, the people that I worked with, they laughed at me. And they said, the boy, his business is way down on the other side of town when my business was actually down the street. Y'all ain't going to talk to the preacher here today. Now, not only did they say my business was across town, but they lied on me and said that the boy ain't going to do what we did. And do you know that I started working that little business that the Lord gave me and a year later the business I left was out of business. Y'all ain't going to say that to the preacher here today. I want you to elbow your neighbor before we get ready to take this plane ride up out of here and say, neighbor, you may not see it right now, but God has something real, real big for you. You get Getting ready to bust at the seams. You getting ready to step into territory that you have not occupied before. The land is yours. The house is yours. The business is yours. Somebody start leaping for joy and say, I'm going to get all of it. I'm sick of watching other people celebrate. It's my time to celebrate. It's my time to shout. Somebody get into the aisle and say, it's my time to run around. It's my time to go get my... I feel like shouting in here one more time, Jason. It's my time to go get it. Somebody say go get it. Go get it. Go get it. Go get it. Grab your neighbor by the hand and say let's go get this thing. I got to go. Let's go get it. I'll never be this low again. I'll never lose my mind again. I'll never be this broke again. I'll never act a fool like that again. I got to go get it. All right. All right. There's a few people in here today. That will say, Pastor, I wasn't expecting all that today. But I feel like I just got to go get what God promised me. Because I've been too, come on here today. I ain't, I ain't, come on here. Ain't nothing wrong with some of y'all coming in here looking cute and beautiful. But baby, when you need something from the Lord, you can care less how you look and get into his presence and say, I need what the Lord has to offer for me. Somebody go for broke real quick and say, God, I just got to go get what I got to get. I just got to go have what I got to have. I must understand that I am the anointed one. Grab your neighbor real quick and say, neighbor, I got to go get this thing. Excuse me. It's been a long time. I was in a pandemic. I couldn't shout. I couldn't run. But I can now. Somebody get loose and say, God, this one's for you. Come on, Jason. Turn it up. Let's go. I said turn it up. Let's go for it. Y'all ready? Yeah. Come on here. This one for my family. Are y'all gonna jump in? Don't be afraid. Don't be scared. Excuse me. Excuse me. This one for my family. Excuse me. I ain't been in church in a while. Excuse me. I got to get loose. Excuse me. I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. Excuse me. I'm going to tear this roll up because I've been trying to hold this thing in. But today I see it. The Lord said, just let it go. Just let it go. Let it go. Let, 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 let it go. Yeah. Come on. I 
You got a little bit longer. You owe him a praise. 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 You owe him. You owe him. You owe him. Don't let her run by herself. Don't let her run by herself. Don't let her run by herself. Come on. Come on. Go get her, Alexis. Don't let her run by herself. Come on. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. Come on and leap for the Lord. Yeah. Come on. Come on. Oh, Santa Bohosaya. Oh, Santa Bohosaya. Little of a man, sire. Be delivered. Be delivered. Be delivered. Well, you've been through as much hell as you've been through. You ain't got time to play with them. I just got to get this thing. Because I'm going through too much. And I need God to heal me from all of this stuff. Now, I need a real, radical, undignified, a church that's not afraid to let loose and to let go of everything that the devil tried to throw on you. Come on here. Somebody ought to get loose and take you a lap or two and say, baby, excuse me. I got to go for it. Come on here. Come on, Danielle. Come here, Danielle. Come on. Come on. Come on. Are y'all going to jump in or you just going to sit there and watch other people jump in? I said jump in. Yeah. It don't take a whole lot to praise him. When I look back over my life and I think about what the Lord has done for me, when I think about the goodness of the Lord and all he's done for me, the Bible says my soul, my soul, my soul, come on here, my soul cries out. It's a, Look at them. They praise them in the row. Y'all better come on. I need you to grab your family and say this one's for my family you don't know the hell I've been through this week but me and my family coming out you need to grab them by the hand grab your kids grab your wife grab your husband and say this one is for us to come on out yeah come on family come on start praising the Lord with your family like he bringing your family out oh Lord oh Lord plead the blood of Jesus all your family come on y'all oh yeah Some of y'all, some of y'all too dignified to praise the Lord. You're too dignified. But baby, if you had only six months to live, what would you do? If you lost everything, how 
How would you praise the Lord? I need you to praise him. Come on here. Like you on your last. Yeah. There is more to me. Yeah. There was a declaration. We got one more. I don't care what season you're in in your life. We got one more. This is your country. Watch it. We got one more. Yeah, there's a bunch of hungry people in here. A bunch of hungry people. And when you get a bunch of hungry people together, blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be fed. You have just shifted. Thank God that you just shifted. Thank God that you just shifted. Everything in your life just shifted. Thank God you just shifted. A shift. Y'all stop. Cause something else. A happen. shift. Yeah. Y'all stop. Yeah. Woo. AJ, get off this order. Y'all clap your hands like we are in the old church. Come on and clap them hands. You've been waiting for everybody else to do it, but you on. I said clap. AJ. Yeah. 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 I feel something brewing. I feel a breakout. Some of us almost didn't jump because we were comfortable. Hey! But because we did. Y'all ready to leap? Come on, let's leap together. Y'all ready? Yeah! Hey! I said if you got a praise left, you almost didn't jump. Yeah! Because it was like a tub of shire. Yeah. The Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost. Yes. Because your last to secure your future. I believe God. I believe God. Come on, sir. Let's talk to your son. Talk to my brother, hold on. I'm telling you, come on. I said, I believe God. Hands lifted all over the room. Hands lifted all over the room. Hands lifted. Hands lifted. Lord told me to tell you today to prepare for a shift. A shift. A shift. That's about to hit your life, a shift. Shifting into better. Shifting into the newness that God has for you. Shifting. Open up your mouth and thank Him for the shift right here. Yeah. 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 Yes, 
Lord. He's here. He's here. He's here. Oh, he's here. He's here. He's here. He's here. Ah, he's here. He's here. He's here. Oh, he's here. He's here. He's here. Jesus, I ask you into my life as Lord and personal Savior. Satan, I denounce you. You have no power and no authority over me. Jesus, I now live for you. You are my Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. Secondly, there's somebody saying, Pastor, I got to be honest with you. I need a church home. I need a pastor. I want to tell you there's no such thing as a perfect church. The moment we joined, it became imperfect because we're imperfect people serving a perfect God. But there is a place where you can feel connected where you can grow with like-minded believers. This is the community of faith that as we are in each other's presence, we build each other up. We encourage one another. We help each other with needs. No need in you being in an island all by yourself. Come on in. There's, there's not a such thing as a perfect pastor. But you got to give something a try. You can't keep doing it all on your own. Why not get connected and get around some other people that would say, well, let's grow together. We got issues. I got issues. But let's 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 grow together. Huh? If that's you. 
you can come down this aisle now. Or if you're online, you can text HOPE IN THE CITY to 844-265-1520. Come on, come. Let's thank God for those. Come on, amen, 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 amen. 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 While we're here with these beautiful people that have come, the river is flowing. Is there anybody else that would say, Pastor, I want to come. I want to give this an opportunity. Hear me. Hear me. You'll never fully be able to move forward holding on to what was. You were in an old season of what was. And I'm telling you to come into the present. Nothing perfect, but just come and see what the Lord has in store for you. We're all growing in Christ. We're all being discipled. None of us have arrived, even though I'm the pastor. I have not arrived, never will arrive. I'm just an imperfect person trying to fulfill an assignment that's big. We don't have a big hierarchy structure here where you got to get through 30,000 people to get to us. We just want to be a church that has the common touch. People need hope. Come connect with Hope today if that's you. One more plea. That's you. Online, type Hope in the City to 844-265-1520. Or if you're in person, come now. God is adding to our church daily. And I believe God is sending some very hungry people. Not only hungry, but really qualitative people. Everyone God sends to us is quality. Everyone. Everyone he sends to us is quality. Everyone. Everyone. Hallelujah. Our church grew more now. We grew way more in the pandemic than we ever did. Ever. You know what the crazy part is? Everyone left. And a whole new group came. You can't be moved by people. Love them, but don't be moved by them. Know your assignment. And if your assignment is here, come join now. We thank the Lord that this beautiful family has come today and our sisters come. Would you turn around for me? Uh, you all turn around for me and just scoot over just a little bit. There you go. And so um, let's welcome these, this beautiful family and our sister today. Hey Amen. Look at this beautiful family. God is adding families to this ministry. Welcome my sister. And I'm old school. I don't care if you don't like it. I'm going to hand the mic to them. And they're going to just state their name, and things of that nature. And my sister turned around like, what you mean? you?" But I'm going to give you the mic. That's what I do. I want you to state your name and, and, and what drew you to come. Hey Amen. Uh, my name is Tamika Rogers. Um, I, I follow you on TikTok. <laughs> And uh, there's a lot of people I follow on TikTok, but there's, there's, there's an oil that runs out of here it's, that's different from a lot of people. And um, I understand that it's important to be connected to a fresh oil in this season. So um, believe it or not, I was praying last night and I went to sleep. I lost my brother about um, two months ago, but I went to sleep and God knows I've been going through some things in my life. So. I had a dream I was sitting in the church and he was preaching and I just knew that God said, just go, you know, just go. And, um, and I'm glad I did. And so I'm here and I just say that the oil drew me, his oil drew me here. Thank you so much. Shanika, Tamika, thank you Tamika, bless you. Brother Joseph. What's going on everybody? Uh, my name is Joseph Newman. Uh, I'm from originally from Philadelphia, just moved down here to Atlanta. And um, one of the reasons why we came through here is because pastor speaks nothing but life the entire time. And I don't know if you guys really hear what he's saying, but he's declaring life over you the entire time that he's speaking. And that's just what our family needed. Wow. 
Hello everyone, my name is Tiana. Um, I'm also from Pennsylvania. And I just wanna say, Pastor, I don't think you know the influence that you have over the nation at this current moment. Um, we first originally came across Pastor because my mother was sending videos to us um, just to you know, motivate us daily on social media. And after the third video, I, I really ignored it because I was like, oh, okay, mom, you're getting a bit much. <laughs> um, but I listened to it. And when I tell you that the shift that came over our entire house, I know it starts with, of course, my partner, but when I read, when I listened to that video and then I went reading Matthew, guys, it was almost like I needed to be here. It was like mm -hmm. the message was specifically for me. And this season, every time I come to church, it has been a message that has blessed me and I can take it home and apply it to myself on a daily basis. And so if you're watching online, if you've seen Instagram videos, if you've seen it on TikTok, and you guys are wondering where you should be Sunday, get here or get in the room. Because guys, I'm telling you, my life has changed since I started coming to this church. Shocked you, didn't I shocked you. you? Be ready in season out of season, young fella. <laughs> he said, <laughs> Guys, let's thank the Lord for our new members on today. Let's come around and greet them. Come on, church. Let's come around and greet our new members on today. Welcome them in our new sanctuary. Come on, come on. Blessings. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Shoo! Hallelujah. Woo! Amen. Amen. She's. Hey. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't forget us. Did we get a picture? Hallelujah. 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 Welcome. Well, 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 well. Hallelujah. Hey Amen. Um, I'm asking Sister um, Cassara and uh, Sister Danielle come as we give closing announcements on today. Hey Amen. Thank you. Danielle has been doing double duty today. Praise the Lord. Let's thank the Lord again for our wonderful <laughs> praise and worship leader today, Sister Nina. They, she came and then brought a whole city with her. And we are thankful that she came and led us in worship. Amen. Amen. And we pray that she would want to come back. Amen. Amen. Did y'all make her feel comfortable? Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Um, oh, um, let me say this. And I know y'all said again, register for the Hope for the City Conference. Yeah. Hope for the City Conference Atlanta. Yeah. You can text the word conference. 844-265-1520 Hope for the City Conference as well as the Night of Hopes that are on Eventbrite. We're doing Houston first and then we'll be in Minnesota, Baltimore, Charlotte, uh, Detroit. We're just going to do one night there, but it's all to lead up to our conference in Atlanta. Get registered. Come on, guys. Amen. What a Amen. good word. Amen. Did you what guys a word. Get, amen. Amen. Did you guys get anything from the word today? Yeah. Amen. amen. All right. All right. Sister Danielle, what did you get? What a powerful word Pastor gave today. The point that really stuck out to me when Pastor said prepare for a shift amen. and to be careful of people who like to bring up your issues mm. because just like the woman of issue of blood, we all got issues. Yeah. And just because my issue is not like your issue, Amen. or my issue might be greater than your issue, does not mean that you should look down on me. And the woman with the issue of blood, she shifted for her by crawling to get to her shift. Amen. So we should all be like the woman with the issue of blood. We should just crawl. If we got to get to our purpose and our shift, be willing to fall down on your knees and crawl to shift towards your purpose. Because when God wants us to move and shift, we gotta do. We gotta be willing to do anything that God needs us to do, even if it includes falling on your knees. You gotta prepare for your shift. And Pastor, all he he also said, it's still your time. 
Amen. It's still your time. So keep pressing your way through to get to your ship. Keep pressing your way through. And don't live in your past. Do not live in your past. Because if Ruth, if she would have lived in her past, Amen. she wouldn't have shifted towards her Boaz. Amen. So don't live in your past. Keep shifting towards your future. Keep shifting towards your purpose. And we all just got to remember that when we shift and when we shift with God, he's going to shift us to a better place that we, can, we could not do if it had not been for God shifting us the way that he did. Amen. Amen. All right. Amen. Um, well, one of the things that I got today wasn't even from a point. It's from what uh, is something Pastor actually said. He said the only way to alleviate the bumpiness you've been experiencing is to shift forward. And I thought that was so powerful because sometimes when things get hectic and things get hard, we move backwards. Yeah. We go back to our old ways. We go back to our old behaviors. We go back to those things that are comfortable. Mm -hmm. But when God is moving us forward, sometimes we have to press forward into his will, into his way, into those things that are unfamiliar because in those things is our purpose and lies what he has for us. So I thought that was a wonderful, wonderful point. And today we had a total of 440 people online what? between YouTube and Facebook. So Amen. Generation of Hope is definitely growing. So let's continue to keep praying over our pastor, over his family, over the church, because we are really growing. We are a church of hope. Amen. So let's continue to pray and invite people to come out to Generation of Hope. Amen. Yes, that is so wonderful. And you guys continue to register for our conference that's coming up next March, the 23rd, 2023. Go ahead and register. Secure your spot so that you can be there with us as we serve the Lord. And don't forget, every Monday through Friday, we have prayer at 630 in the morning and that's on the same zoom link that we have bible study on at 6 30 a.m for prayer so join us to get your morning to get your day to get your week started off with a word of prayer with us and that's on the same zoom link Amen. And also on the same Zoom link is our Tuesday evening service with Pastor. Pastor also has uh, different services throughout the week on TikTok and on Facebook and on Instagram. So join, join in, plug in. Don't just let Sunday be the day that you, you know, abide with the Lord, but at all times. Amen. You ready to bless the people? Amen. Finally, brethren, farewell. farewell. Become, Become complete. complete. Be of good comfort, be of one mind, live in peace, and the God of love and peace be will be with you. you. Amen. Father God, today we thank you for this service, Father God. We thank you for what you have done in this place, Father God. Lord Jesus, we thank you for propelling us forward, Father God. We thank you for helping us shift forward. Father God, we thank you for the Holy Spirit that is within us and causing us to be obedient to your will as we shift forward, Father God. Lord Jesus, we thank you for this season, this new season that is going to be better than any season we have seen in the past, Father God. Lord Jesus, we just thank you for continuing to nurture us. Lord Jesus, we thank you for the growth that is coming to Generation of Hope Church. And Lord, we know that it is not us, that it is you, Father God. We thank you for the souls that are being saved. We thank you for the lives that are being changed, Father God. We thank you for hope, the hope that you are in this name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. 